Uh, good afternoon. We are Team Membrane, and this is our final design presentation on our project of desalinating water. Our group members are Felipe Benalcazar, Kellen Boss, Camilo Rodriguez, Edwin Mani, Katie Norman, Harrison Graham, Nick Benbemelin, and Nick Whitman. So the motivation behind our project is the water scarcity that's prevalent in the world today, especially in arid and semi-arid regions which correspond with high solar insulation, so they receive a lot of sunlight throughout the day. As you can see in that figure right there, a lot of the, nearly half the world's population lives within 100 miles from the coast. So all these red density areas. Um, so we, our solution aims to provide these people with the with the means to desalinate the water that's easily accessible to them into clean, potable water. Our design requirements: we aim for our design to use membrane distillation uh, and have it be solar powered, standalone, and portable excluding the portability of the solar panels themselves that we use to power the system. And we aim for an output of three to five gallons of clean potable water per day and have this water meet World Health Organization water quality standards. So essentially we wanted a portable unit that families could use to desalinate, desalinate water near to them and convert that to clean water without them having to monitor it uh, throughout the day. Principle of air gap. 
And basically what y'all, perhaps a better way to illustrate this principle for you guys is if you have a water balloon and you just fill it up with water, it's going to expand laterally. Uh, this problem with the memory uh, reduces the, or essentially eliminates the air, gap, the air gap itself. And that reduces the overall condensation surface of the aluminum sheets. So we were able to mend this problem by inserting acrylic strips to essentially constrain the membrane to itself. Um, lastly, we also conducted a parallel flow and counterflow configuration tests uh, throughout the semester. Uh, research indicates that counterflow would yield the highest delta T. Uh, this change in temperature would be detrimental to our project because of the fact that we would be operating over a long period of time. Uh, with this amount of time, it would be enough for high delta T's to create our cold water sheet to warm up and essentially, in essence, reduce the delta T. So the data here indicates the average uh, change in temperature for parallel flow is indeed lower than that of counterflow, and so we proceeded with that configuration. So the results of this experiment, so the counterflow flow yielded around 430 millimeters per hour, while our parallel flow configuration increased that amount by 200 millimeters to 650 millimeters per hour. This is in part two changes. One, adding the membrane supports to constrict the membrane, and two, using that parallel flow configuration, which maintain a larger delta T between cool and hot light tanks throughout the duration of the experiment. And this apparatus right here is our membrane housing, as you can see right here. So as the water condenses or condenses on the wooden sheet, it will drip down and collect in this trough and then be funneled through the speaker into our distillate tank. Okay, so for the outdoor testing portion of our uh, project, the main purpose or the motivation behind this was to verify the heating aspect and the integrity of our design. The heating aspect meaning uh, the solar panels is now our source of power as opposed to the wall power for the more controlled inner, uh, indoor <coughs> testing. And the integrity of our design being the robustness and uh, the self-sustaining ability of outdoors. So some of the challenges and constraints we faced, uh, we were trying to heat up our water to a desired water temperature, which was a, there was a threshold of about 60 degrees Celsius. And in order to do this, we needed about five to six hours of <coughs> sunlight, basically direct sunlight or clear skies. And as you all know, the past month or so has been very cloudy. It's been very difficult to do this. Um, and basically, because of this, uh, we're, and we're limited by our solar panel capacity because we need these to basically be operating at their optimal capacity in order to achieve this desired water temperature. Yeah, so here we have this 400 watts and 75 degrees Celsius. Uh, basically means that from a preliminary test last semester, we figured that about 400 watts of power would yield us a temperature just above 75 degrees Celsius, which is well above our threshold. Uh, however, when we were taking some data outdoors, this is for each solar panel in that chart up there. The sunny basically means the direct sunlight that we achieved. We got about 96 watts per solar panel. And if you multiply that by four, because we have four solar panels shown in the pictures here, we did just under this 400 watts, which would be fine. However, uh, most of the days were cloudy, so we were getting a much uh, lower value of about 60 watts, which is more difficult. We needed these solar panels basically to be oper operating pretty close to their uh, they're 100 watt rated solar panels, so pretty close to their optimal capacity. Another important thing we had to test was the quality of our distillate tank. So we collected we had to make sure that our membrane was actually being found in the water. So we went uh, to do this. We got help from Dr. Boone in the chemistry department. She helped us operate the inductively coupled plasma optical ignition spectrometer to measure the concentration of each of uh, four common ions. So, um, so we took uh, three sets of data. Um, one, we tested the seawater to see what um, our levels were in our initial sample. Um, and we found these values are uh, similar to what we've seen in the literature. And then we also tested the distillate that we collected from our prototype when we had heated the hot water to 65 degrees. And as you can see, there's a significant <coughs> knockdown from what is seen in the seawater. And we also tested the distillate from our, that we collected from our final design during our indoor testing. And again, um, it's, um, the values are very similar to what was collected from our prototype. Um, and we also checked uh, to see what the World Health Organization said should be uh, minimum salt levels in your water. And um, our values are um, beneath those recommended values. But um, this, isn't the big, it, this isn't a big deal. It just means that if you're drinking our water all the time, you should just make sure that you're getting enough salt in your diet. So 
looking back at our design goals and our constraints, we were able to desalinate water using membrane distillation, and we were able to put it into a portable unit uh, and stay within our budget. Even though our uh, product had a lower salt concentration than the one suggested by the World Health Organization, uh, we were happy to be able to desalinate the water, which was our main goal. We were not able to test the system under full sunlight due to the weather conditions. However, it is equipped to uh, achieve the power needed under ideal sunlight conditions. Um, we built a membrane housing that is easily uh, put into put together with other ones uh, to upscale the system and get a three to five gallon output uh, by putting them together. Uh, to do this, we would recommend to scale down the water housing thickness to uh, make the volume lower. We would recommend including a battery that will help the system run when there's lower sunlight conditions and including a refrigeration system that would keep the cold water temperature lower in, to increase the, the efficiency of the system. So I guess there is an error on this page now. Oh no, we fixed it, Dr. Amy. Uh, we'd like to thank these individuals here for helping us out and give a special thanks to Dr. Maboub for advising us throughout the process. Are there any questions?